Welcome back to part one on exponential functions and their graphs. So far, we've only dealt with algebraic functions, which include polynomial functions and rational functions. In this chapter, we'll study two types of non-algebraic functions, exponential and logarithmic functions. They are examples of something called transcendental functions, and you will learn more about that when you get to calculus. The exponential function with base b is defined by f of x equals b to the x, where b is greater than 0, and b cannot equal 1, and x is a real number. You might be asking yourself, well, why can't b equal 1? It's because if you raise 1 to an exponent, it will equal 1. Any exponent. Because what is, what is it you're calculating? You're taking the base and you're multiplying it to itself by the number that is given as the exponent. So anything, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 as exponents, these will all give you 1 as output. 1 raised to the 0 gives you 1. 1 raised to the 1 gives you 1. 1 raised to the 2 equals 1 and 1 raised to the 3 equals 1. So as you can see, this does not give us anything that varies. It's just a horizontal line at 1. And so b cannot equal 1. Let's look at negative 2. What happens if b is less than 1? Well, if you have negative 2 and you raise that to the negative third, that's equivalent to 1 over negative 2 raised to the third power. This will give you negative 1 eighth. That's fine, that's an actual real number, but let's see what happens if we try it again with negative 2. So we have negative 2 raised to the negative 2. That will give me 1 over negative 2 raised to the positive 2, which will give me a positive 1 fourth. And so you can see how these might start alternating in, in sign and that would be very difficult to graph. So negative 2 raised to the negative 1 would just be negative 1 half. Negative 2 raised to the 0 would be 1. Negative 2 raised to the 1 would be negative 2. Negative 2 raised to the second power would equal 4. And negative 2 raised to the third power would be negative 8. So from this scenario, it would be difficult, if not impossible, to graph the fact that these have alternating signs. How would you ever graph this on an actual graph? Go ahead and graph negative 2 to the x and see what happens. You might be surprised. So b must be greater than 0. And the last one is could you put 0 as the base? And we'll take a look at that one next. 0 raised to the negative 3. That would be equivalent to 1 over 0 raised to the positive 3. Well, we know we can't have zeros in the denominator, so we just say this doesn't exist. And anything with a negative exponent and a 0 as the base, we would say does not exist. And when you have 0 raised to the 0 power, that's undefined, so we say this does not exist either. Although it seems like it should be 1. You can put it in your calculator and see what happens. And then the last ones, the values for the exponents that are positive integers. 0 raised to the 1, that's just 0. 0 raised to the second power, that's still just 0. And 0 raised to the third power, again, is 0. But we can say that due to the inconsistency to the left of 0 as an exponent, we have to say that this b must be greater than 0. So now we've looked at all the issues and the reasons we have these rules in place. Now let's actually calculate what an exponential function looks like. If we take 2 to the x and raise it to the negative 3, that will give me 1 over 2 raised to the positive 3. 
this is equal to an eighth. 2 raised to the negative 2 would be 1 fourth. 2 raised to the negative 1 would be a half. 2 raised to the 0 equals 1. 2 raised to the 1 equals 2. And 2 raised to the 2 equals 4. And finally, 2 raised to the 3rd equals 8. I'll go ahead and graph these. When x equals negative 3, y is an eighth. When x equals negative 2, y is a fourth. When x equals negative 1, y is a half. And when x equals 0, y is 1. When x equals 1, y is 2. When x equals 2, y is 4, and when x equals 3, y is 8. And if we connect the dots, we will get something that is called exponential growth. Notice that as the numbers on the x-axis get larger, the function gets exponentially taller or higher. So we call this exponential growth. Now let's calculate the second column, 2 to the negative x. This would be 2 raised to the negative negative 3, which would equal 8. When x is negative 2, I would have 2 raised to the negative negative 2. Now remember, we're substituting values in for x. So 2 to the negative x now is 2 to the negative negative 2 which gives me a 2 to the positive 2, which is 4. 2 to the negative negative 1 will give me 2. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. And 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. When x is negative 3, y is 8. When x is negative 2, y is 4. When x is negative 1, y is 2. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is a half. When x is 2, y is a fourth. And when x is 3, y is an eighth. So if I connect these dots, I get something that appears to be exponential decay. So if we were to look at these and we ask ourselves, do you see a relationship between the graph of f of x equals 2 to the x and g of x equals 2 to the negative x, we could say that the functions are similar, however, one is a reflection or flip about the y-axis.